In the year 712, about 30 years after Jesus invented dancing, Pergier invented macro photography. This is a two to one macro lens. That's very rare in macro territory. That means you can blow something up big, bigger than twice. So I figure we fairly battle this thing. It's like a $12 lens versus the Sony 90 mil macro, same focal length, full frame. Is it better? Is this as sharp? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So first impression is a hefty one. She's She's got heft to her. In fact, she's about the same. Are you getting any of that, Sony? It's not much different in size to the Sony Macro, and it's heavier. 638 grams with no caps for 604. I don't know how, because that one has autofocus, image stabilization, and it's a Sony native G lens. Whereas we got this third party thing, but I tell you, it feels premium. It's a clickless aperture. Not sure I'm a huge fan of that. You can't click it anywhere. There's no click button. That hurts my soul. Focus throw, decent. There's the odd bit of non-decentness to it, but you got the nice, it shows you the two to one, like when you're focusing, it says, okay, this is a two to one ratio. Out here is about 1.5 to one. Here's where the Sony loser is stuck at a one to one loser ratio. And then you can just keep on going. The focus breathing is hilarious on this lens. I'll try to demonstrate it for you, but it's kind of impossible in here. So here's a blurry image. And then as I focus, you see nothing. We learn nothing. Now I just took a bunch of pictures in here trying to test the sharpness first this. So let's look at those and then we'll go outside, see if we can get some magical macro slow motion bee or ant footage, something special like that. So right away what you're seeing is just how much closer the per gear can get that two to one ratio, I was almost on it. I think the lens actually went inside my lens to get it. But you can see the Sony's quite a bit sharper. If, even if you zoom in on it, to me the Sony looks sharper even with a 500 times crop. But it's funny too because the Fuji's a 26 megapixel versus the 12 of the Sony, I think it's 10 maybe, 10 megapixels. Now let me just say this, I'm not a macro photographer. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, it's hard. It's hard to get something in shot, like, in shot, oh man. But how I did that was on a tripod with a remote because any little camera shake ruins your life. So those were both wide open and then just a little remote. And on Sony, I did the delay, two second boom. That's how we achieved this. So those were both wide open now, 24 on each and who knows, it looks like the per gear got softer because I probably missed something, but it's impossible to don't judge <laughs> getting this lens by my test. They're terrible. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Tony 5.6, in case you were curious. Doesn't look like the per gear is getting any sharper. I tried to focus on the 1.4, but nothing's in focus ever. Here's Tony 8. It's a good shot. It's a good shot. I also wanted to see the difference between like two to one versus 1.5 versus one to one. So boom, 1.5 to one, we're getting closer to Sony. I think it sharpened up, although probably just because more is in focus. Then here's a one to one next to the Sony one to one. Huh? Huh? So I notice that it has less chromatic aberrations. Take that to the bank. Hello. Fuji colors are all, the blacks are all red. That's on me. I used classic neck. I'm a moron. Here's the hair on my microphone. The wind muff. There's that. Fantastic shot. Wow. And the focus ring on the Sony 20 mil. I knew a part of it would be in focus. That's wide open. Interesting. Here's a picture of my eye. That was not easy to get. Not easy at all. Look at that. And here's a cantaloupe. There's a cantaloupe for you, in case you were wondering. So let's go outside, see what kind of magic we can get. Slow motion, insects, something tiny. Let's live tiny life together. A little flower of hope. 
let me get close to you. Oh my god, that's impossible. Oh, it's so shaky, and there's nothing in focus. Okay, we're on a tripod there. The shakes have left us. We have a leaf. It's a leaf, and a part of it is in focus. We're wide open, Tony 2.8. This is the closest focusing distance. So this is a two to one macro. What is shaking? I don't understand. Oh, it's the leaf. Oh God, leaves blow in the wind. Part of me knew that. Oh, I suck at my job. Oh boy. Okay, let's stop it down a bit. Let's do a 5.6. Ah, there you go. There you go. So I think you have to be on a tripod to use this lens for video shorts of leaves. Because you pick that thing up, you can't. It's so shaky. This is an apple, by the way, just in case you were hungry. Uh, part of it could be in focus in the super stable image. You know, I wanted this lens, oh God, to get like stable, Ant macro slow motion footage. I can't see that happening. There's a fly. There's a fly. Oh, wow. Oh, he flew. Oh, how dare you flies? I didn't know they could fly. a pigeon through the bush. Oh, I suck at focusing. Oh, the cinema was ours. There's a bird. He could be in focus right there. Okay, turn to face me and then fly right at the lens. He's probably not going to do it. We get a little closer. Oh yeah, the cinema's ours. We are, am I getting too close? Wow, it's really tough to keep them in focus. You're in focus 41% of the time. And I like those odds. I love those odds. If I get closer, I get the tonnet. So let me just keep doing this. Oh no. I didn't bring an external microphone, so I'll have to do an ad lib. I can pretty much imagine what I was going to say. So this is an ad libbed cinematic shot in a neighborhood with some tonne of garbage cans in the background. And there's green flowers everywhere. You're welcome, basically. You're welcome. I thought I nailed focus on that little branch and then I, I lined up with it, crouched, it was a good 10 feet in front of it, if it was a foot. I don't know what happened there. That, I suck at my job. We all know that. I like the square look of it. It looks like anamorphic or something. That is fantastic. It takes filters. You could do a black pro mist to soften it even further. Imagine that. I found a painting this morning, by the way, and my girlfriend hates it, so that's the last you'll ever see of it. It was good times there, so. 
do I recommend this lens? My impressions, it's a tough one just because it's so heavy. Stabilization impossible. It doesn't work for what I thought it could, just getting like insect life. You, you'll get small moments of it, but it was really, it's hard to operate. I don't know that I'm a macro guy, but for what it is, a two to one ratio for $12. It has no electronic contacts though, and I think that's why the stabe just doesn't work. Like I had it set to 60 mil digital stabe on, like nothing was making it usable. So that's unfortunate because with the Sony all day, handheld, like it's smooth, it's fine. So it has optical and IBIS working together. This one doesn't even let the IBIS work right. So it's not bad, it's not super sharp, wide open, or stopped down but it's fine. No lens is ever like, oh, here's a 1.2 and then you get it. And it's like, yeah, unusable till 5.6. Most lenses are a lie and this is no different, but I support my friends over there at Pergear to push the envelope and they push it hard. I'll probably sell it immediately, but I appreciate having the opportunity to have tried it and I'm a better person for it. And you could be too if you use my affiliate links down below. Look at that painting. Oh, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it hard, you can't even see it. It's just two drunk women in a bar. Three, well, they're drinking wine. My girlfriend doesn't even want alcoholic women in the house, it's bullshit. I'm in a prison. So, I'm gonna leave. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.